Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today we'll be discussing uh, the SCEC approved products available through Alarm Corp. My name is Jeff Rushton and I'm the Chief Technical Officer here at Alarm Corp. Many of you have been to our webinars, but for those that haven't, we'll just run through a couple of general housekeeping before we get started. You'll notice at the moment that you are muted uh, and you'll remain muted for the duration of this webinar. And also just to ensure that you can both see the presentation that's in front of you and hear me, if you wouldn't mind clicking on the raise hand icon just so I can make sure that um, everything is working. Okay, perfect. You can um, put them down now and we can be on our way. At any time that you want to ask a question, please feel free to do so. The way that we do that is to type your question down in the question bar and then hit the send key. And at the end of the webinar, We'll run through those questions and with any luck, answer those for you. So we'll get started now. Uh, today's topic is, I'm not going to say relatively simple, but there's not a lot of technical information, just a lot of part numbers and um, a few codes. So hopefully for both of us, we'll be able to breeze through this without any, any issues. Um, as I said, most of you guys would already be aware or understand what this webinar is about and what SCEC is about and what their grading system is about. But for those that, that aren't or need a little bit of a refresher, let's just run through, I suppose, the basics. What is SCEC? Uh, I'll read the, the next few slides just to, um, to run through those with you. SCEC is an acronym for the Security Construction and Equipment Committee. This definition comes off the ASIO website, which I've just copied here. The Security Construction and Equipment Committee is the standing interdepartmental committee responsible for the evaluation of security equipment for use by the Australian government departments and agencies. SCEC reports to the Attorney General's Protective Security Policy Committee which was established by the Australian Government to develop and establish guidelines for protection of Australian Government resource. Uh, you can happily go to the skec.gov.au site to learn a little bit more about their um, committee and procedures if you like. For the purposes though of our discussion today, when we're talking about electronic security equipment that is SCEC approved. Uh, it was back in the old days SCEC endorsed, they've changed that for whatever reason, so everything that refers here is SCEC approval. There has been a classification system around for, for many years that I suppose has only relatively recently been replaced, let's say in the last 18 months or so. There's still many products that were approved before, let's say, 18 months, two years ago, that are, that are still listed under the old classification system. So some of our products, not only ours, but obviously others in the market, will have the words intruder resistant area or secure area next to their uh, approval. Intruder resistant is what we would call the lower of the two security levels, and secure area is the highest for a, a security product. Products that were used outdoors on perimeters, any approved product just had the word perimeter next to it. There was no grading, it was just approved as a, a perimeter product. And for the couple of CCTV products that are in the catalogue, they had the word CCTV next to the approval. Today though, or as I've said in the past 18 months or so, they've changed that to have a scale and the scale goes from one to four, one being the least secure and four being the most secure. So I'll be referring, those, referring to those as security level one through to security level four. 
Typically, the majority of electronic security products fall within security level one, two, or three. Uh, we do have a product that is SL4 rated that we'll go through shortly. I mean, as the purpose of this uh, webinar is to go through the SCEC products that Alarm Corp sells, we can divide those products into these categories that we'll go through individually. We have a range of internal motion detectors. There are some external motion detectors as well, a fence detection system, seismic detection, vibration detection, a bunch of reed switches, a couple of electronic locking mortar socks, and uh, a couple of CCTV products as well that all are rated. So let's look at our internal motion detectors to start with. On this page, there's a, a range of ceiling mount units. For those that are well familiar with SCEC approved products, the one on the top of the list there, the EV669, has been around for quite a while, I don't know how many years, but a, a, a number of years, and certainly is, from my understanding, the most popular ceiling mount SCEC approved detector that's there. We can see that it's under the old rating for secure area, so it has the highest rating. Alongside the EV669, we've got the same detector in a dual technology version, and the same detector with a dual technology and anti-mask function. So we can see there the EV669 has a secure area rating, the dual detection version has got a security level of two, and the anti-mask a security level of three. All three of them have the same basic, um, not functions, but uh, technology within them. And if we looked at the Aratec brochure, it would tell us that it has a step and gliding focus using a multi-curtain mirror optics. We won't describe the technology or necessarily how it works, but this is Aratex's highfalutin way of saying their detectors not so bad. Um, it has dual pyros and it has ASIC techno uh, processing um, with 4D capabilities. On site, the coverage zone or the pattern can be selected. There's an additional bi curtain processing for harsh environments. And you don't need to adjust the detector regardless of the mounting height within its minimum and its maximum um, height constraints. All the three ceiling mount detectors have exactly the same technology. Obviously the dual technology uh, incorporates a range controlled radar unit and the anti-mask obviously includes anti-mask. Uh, anti-mask for those who may not be familiar with it is the ability that the detector will activate an output or go into alarm or go into a trouble condition when you attempt to block the detection zones from the detector. In other words, you maybe spray the front of the, the lens with something or put something directly in front of the detector in order to inhibit it detecting on the other side of, of that obstacle. As you can appreciate, because it has that function and it's a dual technology, that it has a higher security rating. Aratec have a, a number of ranges of products, and I've listed these by their range rather than their security level, so you can see um, how they relate to each other, I guess. The first standard PIRs that we're looking at is their EV1012 range. And that is a, a 12 metre detection coverage and is available in an anti-mask version as well, hence EV 1012 AM. All the, in the next couple of pages of detectors all have exactly the same technology. 
in Aratex terminology, they've got a, a three bridge step and glide focus curtain mirror, much the same as the 669 before it. Has 5D signal processing for very good false alarm immunity. Detects the ability to try and cloak or umbrella immunity. So it will detect those sort of um, means to inhibit the detector's ability to go, go into alarm. They have full under crawl detection and what they call autofocus with constant range sensitivity. So regardless of whether you're close to the detector or at its maximum range, the, the object will appear at the same size and the sensitivity will be the same accordingly. Of course, the difference with the anti-mask version is that anti-mask is included uh, in much the same way as the, the 669. Beyond that, they have exactly the same in a 16 metre version, the EV 1116 and the 1116 AM. Exactly the same technology, just a larger uh, coverage distance. So now we've got 16 metres of coverage on both and an anti-mask version of the same detector. Beyond their EV series range of detectors, and maybe this is a bad marketing ploy, but they've got a VE series, the reverse letters. And I'm sure that was totally coincidence. Um, so just be careful when someone is specifying a particular detector that they have got the letters around the right way, whether it's EV or VE. The VE series detectors are pretty much the latest uh, technology in the Aratec range. And all of the VE series have what they call V to E signal processing for false alarm immunity. As I said, I'm not going to run through how the technologies of these units work, uh, but there is a, a full, not only data sheet and brochure, but a functional specification on what this technology is and how it relates to excellent sensitivity and excellent false alarm immunity for these range of detectors. So we can see that within this we have our 12 metre detector like we had before. We've now also got a 12 metre pet immune sensor up to a 15 kilo pet as well as an anti-mask version of this 12 metre detector. So we can see that they have security levels one through two, again, exactly the same as the EV series detectors. Going on from that, we could expect that they also have a 16 metre version of exactly the same technology. So there's a VE 1016, a 1016 AM, and they've also got a 20 metre version of the same detector. So the 1120 and the 1120 AM. If you'll notice next to security level, we've got pending on those. By rights, I probably should take this slide out as they're not SCEC approved at the moment. Uh, that approval is pending. So hopefully they will be um, approved shortly. Again, because they have exactly the same technology as the detectors before them that are that are approved. So hopefully we'll see those as part of our uh, SCEC approved selection very soon. Again, after the that ceiling mount detector, the EV669, the VE735 would probably be the most common SCEC approved standard internal motion detector that's available today. This, the 735 by itself has a security level of one. The anti-mask version of this detector has a security level of three. The VE736, not that common. It's exactly the same as the VE735, except it also has changeover alarm contacts rather than just normally closed contacts. What makes this detector, uh, I suppose, a little bit different or I suppose very popular, is it's a, described as a 20 metre volumetric detector 
but it also has a couple of 60 metre long segments that you can see on the overhead drawing next to it. So it's basically a standard wide angle detector that goes out 20 metres, but also has a, a couple of curtain detectors that go out 60 metres from the unit. Its pyro is patented, it has digital signal processing, it has what they call high density mirror optics, and they also say it's a, an absolute volumetric detector. What that basically means is for its detect for its detection range, it has no holes, there are no dead spots, there are no less sensitive areas of, of this detector. It also has the ability that you can set up a function that will only go into alarm when you're crossing left to right or right to left across it, so it has directional control on it as well, as well as as you would expect some different sensitivity settings. And unlike most detectors, this has a self-test with its own trouble output relay. Nearly all detectors these days will include some form of self-test or self-test on, on startup, but there aren't too many around that will give a relay or a trouble output when the detector fails its self-test. Has an event memory, so you can interrogate the unit as to when and how it went into alarm. They will say, like we will always say, it's very easy to install, but there's also a, a, an optional product they call a laser beam alignment tool. That's a little product that after you install the unit, you can happily walk around with this tool and you can visually see the limits to the zones on this detector. So you can very quickly work out where it will detect and where it won't detect with a, a minimum of, of trouble. Uh, as well as for a, a SCEC approved product, it has both a pry off and a cover tamper switch on the unit. You will see though, and we see it literally every day of the, the week, that there's a, still a lot of uh, specifications uh, coming out, you know, yesterday, today, tomorrow that will have obsolete SCEC approved products listed as the only product that they accept. What we've done here is list all those obsolete products, ones that have been superseded or run out of production, and listed the latest equivalent unit that can quite happily be exchanged for the one in question. So wherever you see an EV425P, you can happily put in an EV1116. An EV635, you can use a VE735. An EV645, you can happily use the VE735. The DD475, there's another product called a DDV1016 that you can use in place of, of these detectors. So everything on this page is a, an obsolete Aratec detector. There also are a number of Siemens PIRs which we sell that are also obsolete or at least running out. The IR200 uh, is still around. We still have a, a reasonable amount of stock of this product, but it is end of life and the recommended replacement would be the Aratec EV1012 when we run out of stock of this particular detector. The IRF310 and IRF312 have both been obsolete for some time, the last couple of years, and people still ask for these products today. Uh, we would recommend the EV1116AM or the VE735AM as a replacement for those obsolete units. So that pretty much takes care of our internal motion detectors. As you can see, there's quite a range to pick from. In some cases, they will be described by part number alone. Uh, in other cases, you need to pick the appropriate SCEC approved detector to fit the application. So with those you know, range of detectors that we have, you should be pretty much right for any internal application. 
When we look at external SCEC approved detectors, ADPRO have recently had two of their units um, uh, approved. One is called a PRO100H and the other is a PRO45DH. The PRO100H can work up to 150, it gives a 150 metre curtain outdoors and has a, an SL2 rating. If you haven't seen these detectors, um, you can see to a degree by the picture there that it looks very similar to uh, an outdoor camera housing. It's a little bit smaller, but doesn't look that too much that much different to a, an outdoor camera housing. They have about 10 or 15 detectors in the range to do all sorts of widths, lengths, and, and various coverages. These are the two that are SCEC approved. Back in an old SCEC catalogue, there would have been an ADPRO Pro100H, uh, oh, sorry, actually it was called a Pro150D was a product. Uh, that has long since gone out of production and the 100H is its identical uh, replacement as in the sense that it has a 150 metre range with a curtain detector but at its maximum distance is about 3.3 metres uh, in width for the detection coverage. So really great in any outdoor application, certainly if it's going parallel to a, a fence or a perimeter or a wall line or even in a big factory looking down the middle of a, um, a hallway or an alleyway. Um, in terms of uh, how good it works, what it says here is it, well, we've got a sensitivity adjustment to suit pretty much most conditions. It has a very much a, a sound design that once it's installed, really it will give you reliable operation with, I would say, no, no maintenance. They have what's called an adaptive threshold circuitry and what that does is try and reduce the amount of nuisance alarms that you get from vegetation that's moving or tree branches or small animals or maybe sudden environmental changes. You know, it goes from sunny to, to raining really quickly or, or you know things like that. Um, it's false alarm immunity is, is second to none and it's sensitivity for picking up people or other objects, cars, trains, things like that is absolutely exceptional. The difference with the Pro 45 DH, we can see that it has a smaller range, it's a, it's a 60 metre curtain, but the, the D in the part number tells us that it's a directional product, that is, that we can selectively have an alarm when we cross the detection zone either from left to right or right to left. So if it was parallel to a perimeter, we could have it so it only goes into alarm when you cross from outside over the perimeter and past the detector and not if you're inside going out, for example. So, you know, extra applications and, and, and extra options there for you. So both of these detectors are well, great for indoors, certainly work well on outdoors and as you can see have the equivalent or have the um, corresponding security level that's listed there. Another outdoor product that we have is the GeoQuip guard wire. It's a microphonic, microphonic cable system. Basically it has a cable that doesn't look that much different to let's say a coax cable. It works totally different but in terms of look it's much the same. It's cable tied um, across a, a chain link fence or potentially a steel link fence, a palisade fence, a brick fence, a concrete fence, down just about any type of fence that you want to put it on. Uh, gives a range or a length of up to potentially 300 metres of cable on a single zone and will detect anyone trying to climb over or cut through that particular fence. Unlike the majority of fence detection systems that are currently available, this one is extremely easy to install and it's even easier to set up 
and um, and commission. You don't need any special tools. You don't need a laptop or a PC. You don't need any software. You just need what every good tradesman's got as a little terminal screwdriver, and um, all the controls and lights are, are inside the box on the um, on the processor. So it's very easy to set up um, and has been around for more than 20 odd years and is extremely, extremely reliable in operation. It's not just good for high security sites, which of course what we're talking about today. It's just as ably bodied in commercial environments, anywhere that has a perimeter that needs to be protected, that has a fence of some description. So leaving outdoor products, I suppose this is a semi-outdoor product, we can move on to the Siemens seismic detector. The GM730 is the only seismic detector in the SCEC catalogue and this product is used extensively everywhere, basically, uh, financial institutions in particular and most definitely in high security sites. Anywhere where you have a requirement to detect against a major forced entry, or sabotage or ram raiding or anything that, that has any type of gross attack on it. The GM730 has a radius of four metres around the unit for detection. So Obviously, if you have an area larger than that, you will put multiple of these GM730s in. By itself, when it's installed in a, a, a SCEC job, it comes with a security level of two. For any SCEC application, I would not only suggest, I would say that you would always install the GMT4 box, which is a, an optional little box that comes or that we, we can sell you with the detector. When the, the GM730 is installed in this GMT4 box, it has a security level of 4, which is the highest rating of, of any electronic security product. Other than the fact that it gives you a higher rating, why do I suggest it? Is with all of, of the panels and end of line modules that are used for these types of installations, you've obviously got to find somewhere to put your end of line module. Uh, it will not fit in the seismic, so that means that you have to go out and put a separate junction box that's tampered and install that somewhere close by where you, you put the seismic. Um, the GMT4 box allows you to run the cable directly into the box, it will accommodate any cabling you have, as well as any end of line module, as well as offers an increased level of, of security and tamper resistance. So in any application where you're using it, yeah, please, please um, install or quote the GMT4 box with it. Beyond a seismic detector, Siemens also have a vibration detector. The ES400 is the only vibration detector in the SCEC catalogue that I'm aware of as well. It has a security level of perimeter, so good for any perimeter application. It's an electronic device, so it has power and has relay outputs. You can set up the sensitivity. It's very high immunity to environmental disturbances. Uh, you can adjust the sensitivity works on a range of voltages, uses very little current, and as you can see from the box down there, has works on pretty much any surface. So if you have a steel or a wood or a plywood application, you get a radius of about three metres from the product, a brick or paving stone, two metres, or on concrete you get a one metre radius. Normal application on this would be to install on a window frame. Of a, um, a of a you know a high security site. Next on our list comes a, a range of reed switches 
that are available through our Cells Alarm Corp as well. The SM3 is no doubt the most popular of all the switches, or in fact just about any of the other products. Um, the SM3 is the only approved switch that also allows for the end of line module to be installed in the switch without adding anything else. The W71911 is a flush mount high security triple bias read switch. The 2804T is uh, an explosion proof switch, very high duty switch that can be used again in secure areas, um, works on any large door, has a reasonable gap distance as well. The 2627 and 2757, both are pretty much identical flush mount switches. The, two, the, sorry, the 2767 has a slightly larger gap distance that it will operate on. So again, the only switch that can hold an end line module is the SM3 and the rest you need to have a tampered junction box typically next to in order to accommodate that device. And all of these switches have a secure area rating. In terms of electronic locking, we sell the, the Leggy electric mortise locks. There are two models of this that are SCEC approved to intruder resistant areas. The only condition with these, or in fact with any electronic locking solution, is that it must also incorporate a, an approved SCEC keying system to go with the um, mortise lock to keep its intruder resistant area rating. So both of these are available through us as well, the Leggy 990 series MF and MFE electronic water socks. Something that you won't see very much of in a SCEC catalogue is CCTV products. As far as I'm aware, there's only three SCEC CCTV products in the catalogue, two of which are listed on, on this page that we can sell you and both come from Extralis and it's what they call their Presidium Video Motion Detection System. The top picture is the full blown unit which is a rack mounted unit that has plug in cards to accommodate from 2 to 20 channels of analog CCTV. The Presidium Mini is a, well, I suppose a standalone two channel inbuilt analog CCTV video motion detection product. Um, I'll read what it says here in terms of its, its capabilities. It says it's an outdoor video intrusion detection that uses video analytics to determine when the intruder enters an area. It offers protection of the perimeter and protected areas of a site. It has reliable detection in a wide range of site conditions. It gives a, a clear presentation on the screen of the cause of the alarm uh, to a local or a potentially a remote operator. Has a very high detection probability and with a minimal probability of any nuisance alarms. Excellent tamper, anti-tamper capabilities, uh, as well as it's very simple to connect. You plug your camera into it, into the in, input, take the output, and plug it into wherever that camera was going, into your VMS system or into your DVR or whatever else that you've got, and hooks onto the network, and then you program this with some software via your PC over the network. As I said, there aren't too many CCTV products at all in the, the SCEC catalog, and both of these products um, allow you to use the video motion detection or analytics as the primary source of alarm for a, uh, a, a SCEC site. So just as we can use a PIR as a form of alarm or an outdoor detector, 
we can use the video motion detection capabilities here as the primary source of an alarm input to your system. So if we just do a quick recap of the, the, the products that we've got, with our internal motion detectors, we've got about 13 PIRs that will suit most applications, whether it be commercial or high security. We've got the two ADPRO outdoor detectors that are good up to potentially 150 metres outdoors. We have our GEQIP fence detection system that uses microphonic cable. The GM730 is the only seismic uh, in the catalogue, so, as, so, so is the ES400 is the only vibration switch in the catalogue. We've got a range of, of, of switches that can be used uh, that have uh, secure area approval. A couple of mortar locks when used with uh, SCEC approved keying systems and the Presidium systems from Astralis that do our video motion detection and analytics for analog cameras through a, a, any CCTV system. So not a bad comprehensive list of a full range of electronic products uh, that have some level or some degree of SCEC uh, approval. If you want some more information, best place I would go first up is our website at alarmcorp.com.au. From there, you could subscribe to our Alarm Corp Pulse, which is a monthly newsletter that comes out and, and gives some information, both on our industry and our Alarm Corp in particular. If you register online at our website, you can also get full access to our e-commerce platform and you can buy stuff from there, place your orders or have full access to all of our technical documentation for all of our products as well. If you need more information, please feel free to contact any of the names there in any of the regions you're in. Or to make it easy, you can just happily contact myself, both on my mobile or on my email. Alarm Corp has now been in on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter for a couple of months, so feel free that when you're ever on any of those sites to like or follow us and they give a slightly different, well, a totally different feed to, let's say, our newsletters that get emailed out. So please feel free to um, to um, follow or um, or connect with us on those sites. We've still got a, a range of regular webinars for the remainder of the year. We have intrusion webinars uh, every third Thursday, um, which the next one here is on Aratech PIRs on the 21st, as well as the same with our CCTV systems on every second Wednesday of the month. And the next one coming up on the 13th of next month is uh, Sony cameras. We'll run through the applications and, um, and models on each of, of the cameras that are available there. When you attend any of our webinars, you have access to generally some special promotions. Uh, we've been running a 10% off uh, for pretty much all of our webinars this year, that if you log on and order online, you not only get your discounts off the, the listed trade price that we have, uh, you'll receive an extra 10% off those already discounted prices other than on our uh, CPAS, Sony or Verant products. Certainly now, if you haven't already typed in a question and hit send, now's the time to do so and we'll just spend uh, the next couple of minutes going through those and answering any questions that you have. Okay. 
First question, not necessarily on the webinar, but in general, um, is it possible to grab a recording of this? No, I like keeping these for myself. No, every webinar that we do is recorded and it's uploaded straight away. So what happens is certainly if you have attended one of our webinars before, two hours after the webinar you'll receive an email thanking you for attending and it will have a link to uh, our website where you can replay this as many times as you wish. Um, if you didn't attend, you'll get a, a, an email as well. You'll receive an email tomorrow if you didn't turn up and we'll say sorry that you couldn't make it and also give you a link to the recorded webinar so at least you can look at that in your own time rather than the two o'clock schedule that we, we've obviously been abiding by. Um, in any case, you can happily go to our website and look under the resources tab and all of the webinars for this year will be listed. You can happily click on that and uh, stream those down and watch those at your leisure. But is there anything else? Okay, someone's asked, is there any other products in the pipeline that will be submitted to T4 for approval? That's pretty much, I suppose, an ongoing thing. Whenever one of our suppliers or manufacturers develops a new product, we really do a bit of research to see whether there's an application for that and submit that if we feel the, um, the need. Certainly one that I'm aware of that's currently sitting with them that you know you guys in the industry have had certainly a need for for a number of years and you've had to do all sorts of things to um, get around it is uh, an intrinsically safe PIR. Extralis, exactly the same or very similar to their AdPro detectors that we uh, that have already seen the Pro 100H and the Pro 45DH. They've got a range of intrinsically safe detectors that look very similar that uh, are with T4 at the moment to go through approval. When they become approved, we'll certainly you know, let everybody know that they're available and um, you know, take it from there. But that's a, a product that a lot of guys have had a need for and a lot of consultants have had a need for specifically when it comes to an ammunition storage facilities, uh, our seismics and detectors oh, and uh, read switches and all of that stuff work really great, but when you want motion detection inside in those areas, it isn't as clear cut as putting one of those detectors up. It has to be an intrinsically safe device and really up until now, there, well, there has never been a SCEC approved intrinsically safe PIR that has been available off the shelf. So when that becomes available, we can let you know. Uh, someone else has asked, do you have any other products that are not SCEC approved that have been used on, on SCEC sites? Um, funnily enough, the short answer is yes. There's, there's always products that, that there's a requirement for that there is not an approved product for. In particular, the, the thing that we see so often is, although we've got about five read switches that are SCEC approved, none of those look like or work like a standard roller shutter contact that mounts on the ground on the concrete, has got beveled edges and is approved. And it really does make it difficult when trying to install one of the approved switches on a large roller door uh, where you either have to chisel into the concrete and mount the unit flush which is always a, a, a nightmare or attempt to try and mount it on the side of the door and on the side you know, of the wall. Uh, quite often it doesn't work. In those applications where an existing approved switch just isn't going to cut it, um, there has been occasions where they have allowed what looks like a standard read switch on the ground. It's a product that comes from the same place as the Gardel um, triple bias read that is approved and it's called a VS222 and it's a triple biased 
roller shutter reed switch that comes in two versions, a left and a right handed version, so you can mount it on one or either or both sides of a roller door regardless on how wide. So in cases like that where you, don't, you can't seem to find a product that is approved, talk to us about products that maybe aren't approved that we have used before and you might be able to get some um, you know the ability to use those products on on a particular installation. Don't know if there's anything else coming up. Okay. So based on that, certainly I'd like to thank everyone for attending this webinar today. We certainly appreciate the time you've taken out of your schedule, and certainly hope that it's been beneficial to you. We definitely look forward to seeing you at the next webinar and hope that you enjoy the remainder of your day. So goodbye.